everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to talk about if you're in happily in a relationship right now, but you also want to explore opening your relationship. I've had a couple of different people ask me about this um, and especially like couples that are interested in coming to my monthly play parties. Um, they are always ask like just a lot of questions around this because there isn't that much information out there on how to like safely and in like in an embodied way open your relationship with your partner where like everyone's feeling loved and protected <clears throat> i see like you know a lot of monogamy talk out there and then a lot of people being polyamorous but not maybe not necessarily in a way that's like protecting everyone's hearts so the way that i do it is somewhere in the middle uh, I found my own way, and I'm going to share some books in the links that I've helped that have helped me over the years. Um, but f a lot of this has come from my own experience, and something that I learned, like during tantra and and just doing a lot of self work on myself, was that a lot of people. First off, if you want to have a connection outside of your current relationship. You have to have a connection first to yourself. You have to have a connection to your source energy. You can call it higher self, God, <clears throat> all that is. Like whatever it is, it's like this is your tapping into source energy. And this is also your, so this is connection to your own soul and then having a connection to your own body. And what I say to people is like, I view myself first as having a relationship with myself. <clears throat> like I am dating myself first and every other person that comes into that relationship is coming into a relationship with me dating myself. Like, and so I really honor this relationship with myself. I've built this over time. I've built trust in my, my relationship to my body and my soul, my spirit. And, um, <clears throat> I take myself out on dates, you know, I journal all the time. I like check in. I make sure that I'm honoring like what's good for me. If you listen to my last podcast, I talk about how over the years I've learned how to speak my boundaries and, you know, really like speak my truth. And for me, that is honoring this relationship that I have with myself. And so what I see a lot in couple dynamics is that um that people could be in relationship with themselves more i think it's very easy to get into a coupleship i was in a, a marriage for six years i got married when i was 18 as a virgin so i'm used to being in partnership and when i got married at 18 like i didn't have a relationship with myself first like i didn't know what that even meant and so it was very easy for me to get lost in my relationship with my partner. Like it wasn't necessarily like, what do I want or what do I desire? It was like, what do we desire as a couple? And like, you know, it was hard for me to even figure out what I wanted anymore because like everything just got kind of melted into this <laughs> ball of like us, this usness. And, um, I really felt like I lost my identity. Like I didn't know who I was anymore. And I didn't have um, a strong, like I had always had a strong source connection ever since I was little. But I felt like in this partnership, I didn't know how to protect it. I didn't know how to protect this relationship with myself while I was in <clears throat> a partnership with someone else. And so I, I felt like I got lost for many years. You know, I... I was married for six years, and when I got out of the relationship, I, s I remember telling myself, I will never let myself lose my, my connection to myself, my connection to my higher self, and this identity that is me as Brittany Bond, you know, on my own, outside of a relationship. Like, I didn't want to be someone's wife or, you know, referred to as a we or someone else's extra, especially as women in society today, that's still very patriarchal. It's very easy to become someone's girlfriend, someone's wife, like you kind of lose your identity as a person. <clears throat> I'm not saying this is everyone, but I grew up in a very conservative religious uh, environment where women didn't have that many rights. And this was something that was very real in my environment. So 
Yeah. So first off, you have to really make sure that you have this relationship with yourself. Like, do you know who what your passions are on your own? Do you have individual, you know, times where you just go hang out with yourself and you have your own hobbies and things that you like to do? And are you good at speaking your truth, even if you think it's going to hurt your partner's feelings or even if you think it doesn't, your partner does not necessarily agree with your truth? Because you have to be able to do this first before you can bring anyone else into the situation. Because if you guys don't have good communication or if you don't know who you are and have the strong connection to yourself first, if you add more people into that, it is only going to get messier and like worse communication and like just more complicated. And this is what I see a lot in polyamorous situations where people don't have a strong connection to themselves. They're not good at communication. And then I remember one person who told me that he was like, yeah, I'm polyamorous and I feel like I spend most of my time like keeping up on my relationships. And I remember thinking, no, 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 my relationships are going to add to my life. I'm not going to have like my energy taken away by my relationships. Like to me, that feels like a distraction. I want it to be like, you know, my life is already fucking amazing and I want whoever else comes into the situation to like add to that abundance, not take away from it. So that's how you come from a place of abundance is like are you guys already this is something you have to really ask yourself and be very honest are you wanting to open up the relationship from a place of abundance like are you guys already good within yourselves do you love each other you know like are you feeling like you're meeting each other's needs um because if you are like i believe that everyone is a reflection everyone's reflecting a different part of ourselves to us. You know, this is the irony of, um, of being a a soul on this timeline. It's like, we are complete within ourselves. We are a complete universe. And at the same time, we don't really know so much who we are and what we are until we see this reflection in someone else. Like someone reflects us back to ourselves. And this is why we love relationships. You relate, you, you choose to, you know, have these connections so that you can see more and more of yourself and grow as a person. And it's really beautiful. And I don't believe that we are meant to do these in coupleships as in silos. Like we are wired to have relationships in deep community and tribes. Like this is how we were for many millennia. And only in the last couple thousand years since the industrial revolution, agricultural revolution, have we started to silo out where we are not supported by a whole community. So I'm saying that because if you are in partnership right now and some of your fundamental needs are not getting met, like say your emotional needs or like needs for connection, ask yourself first, like, is this something that can be met in like a platonic way? Like for me, I had to really check in when we got to Berlin because I was like feeling really lonely here. And I asked myself, I'm like, is this because I want to sleep with other people or have like romantic connections? And I realized that a big part of my needs that were not getting met was I wanted, I chose to have, and I desired sisterhood. And I have this back on Copanyong where I normally live. And like, I have a community of women that, you know, at any given moment, one of us is like down to hang out, go to a waterfall, go to the beach and like really co-regulate with each other, like share our stories with each other, relate to each other, be able to give each other these reflections and remind us each other of our power and who we are and, you know, really drop in together. And for me, that's so beautiful. And that's something that I was really craving when I got here to Berlin because it's Faraday, my boyfriend's, you know, home country. He's lived in Berlin for 10 years. He has a big community here. And also he speaks the language. Like there's many things. And so like I had to really check in and ask myself, like, am I seeking partnership outside of our, like romantic relationships outside of our dynamic out of abundance or scarcity and for me right now I had to really check in and so I realized like first I want to make sure I have my sisterhood you know how do I put it like I don't want to say like box checked but like you know like you need these different supports in your dynamic like if you think of it from a tribal standpoint like I have my godparents they are super important to me I check in with them I reflect back my relationship with my boyfriend Faraday with them they really help they're really helpful And I am choosing to have like more sisters and calling this in. And I have like a sisterhood circle that I'm starting next week. And 
there's so many beautiful reflections coming my way of who I am and who I choose to be and like supporting and celebrating this. So for you, like really make sure that you have your support network first, because I see a lot of our programming in today's world being like everything that we had from tribalism, like, you know, your sisters, your brothers, your aunties, uncles, grandparents, you know, godparents, real parents, all of these are now replaced and compartmentalized into one person, which is our partner. Like we subconsciously a lot of times put all of these needs for connection and reflections into our partner. And there is no way that that person can meet all of our needs, like in all of those reflections. Like with Faraday and I, I would say that out of all of my partnerships and relationships with men, he has met, met and reflected back to me who I am, like, the mo- the most out of everyone I've dated. And still there's people, there's still parts of myself that are not reflected. And that's beautiful because we are not meant to have all of this come from one person. And this is why there's more of us. This is why there's like seven, eight billion of us on this planet so that we can have more of these connections. And it's really beautiful. So yeah, like take that pressure off from yourself and your partner that you guys have to meet each other's needs. And because what I see a lot in my relationship, my own personal relationships was, yeah, this programming that like my partner is supposed to meet like almost 100% of my needs. And if he doesn't, it's kind of this like, shameful thing that like, I don't talk about because I don't want no one else is talking about it. And I don't want it to look bad on my partner or my relationship within our social standing of our community or, you know, my girlfriends. And so I always say like, yeah, everything's great, you know, unless things are really not okay. And then I like share about those with my close people. But for the most part, um, I, I just have had so many relationships where on the surface, everyone thought everything was perfect. And then we broke up. And I was like, why didn't I invite people in along the way to like, support me and support my partner and like reflect back to me these different parts of myself so then you know like I think there was a lot of my relationships where we might have still kept going and dating each other if we had allowed in other connections in our lives or at least not put all this pressure on ourselves that we needed to meet each other's needs all the way so yeah saying all that to like give you some parameters like really look for or Allow yourself to come to a place of abundance with your support network, with your connections before you, and with your partner, like if you're in a place of abundance where you're like, you guys are like, this is so amazing and we, w- we would love to open it up to more amazingness. And if you are not there yet, work on it until it's there or really face it and ask yourself, why is it not? Because if you are trying to fill a hole some way emotionally sexually physically all all of the ways with other people um you know like if there's something in your relationship that's not working it's only going to prolong your breakup if you don't face it now like if you add more people into it it's just going to get more complicated and then eventually you're going to break up because you're not looking at the real thing that needs to be fixed or shown love or be honored you know or at least communicated And that's one thing I'll say about opening a relationship is you have to be so good at communication. You have to love communicating with your partner. You have to be able to communicate the most vulnerable parts of yourself because this is an opportunity for both of you to grow. So it's actually a really beautiful thing to communicate. And if you don't communicate, it's so easy to... (laughs) in the nicest way possible fuck up the situation because it's just so easy to look at things the wrong way or take things the wrong way because we all have our insecurities and so if you can just name your insecurity like yeah it made me feel uncomfortable when you're flirting with that woman right in front of me like we need to talk about our agreements so this is I'm going to set up the next phase which is you need to have really solid agreements with each other so what does this mean I feel like a lot of people Um, don't realize that we come into this society and our culture with so many non-verbal agreements around monogamy. So for instance, 
if you are choosing to be in a monogamous relationship with someone, like you guys don't sit down and be like, when you start your relationship, okay, so you're not going to flirt with other people. You're not going to sleep with other people. You know, you're not going to like emotionally be, you know, connected to other people romantically outside. You already have this nonverbal agreement because a lot of this is built into our culture. So if you're in a a monogamous relationship with someone, you already have these kind of like set agreements that you guys agree to when you sign up for the relationship. What people don't realize is that when you go into, they call it ethical non-monogamy. This is a term that you'll learn when you start. I like ethical non-monogamy more than polyamory because ethical non-monogamy just means like you're being conscious about your non-monogamy. Whereas polyamory can mean many different things. It means like having many different lovers. But I don't think like for me at this moment in time, I'm not polyamorous. Like I don't have two set lovers. But I I do choose to be ethically non-monogamous. So when you go into ethical non-monogamy, you have to realize that like when you chose to, to, to originally, you know, like if you chose to have relationships built on monogamy and these nonverbal agreements those like you guys agreeing to doing those nonverbal agreements like you know not sleeping with other people not flirting with other people blah 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 that equal trust so when you go into ethical non-monogamy a lot of times people think okay this means we can do whatever we want and it's like how do you build trust in a relationship and this comes from very clear agreements so You can make whatever agreements you want with your partner. I recommend doing it step by step. Like, okay, you know, for instance, if you want to come to a play party, it's like, okay, I want to go to a play party. Okay, the agreement is we are going to play together at the play party, like as a couple, and other people can come into that dynamic. And so whatever you decide, that's what you have to stick to. And what I think people don't realize is, ethical non-monogamy is still just as safe as monogamy and sometimes even more so because people are being upfront they're being real about their desires instead of saying yes let's be monogamous and then cheating on each other behind their back which is most people ethical non-monogamy equals you have very clear communication of how you're going to play with other people whether it's emotionally sexually physically like even if it just means cuddling or being central, but you clearly communicate that with your partner and you and your partner are on the same team. So this is like the most important part. You need to make sure that you and your partner feel like you guys are on the same team. Not like, okay, I'm giving you, I'm giving my partner, you know, free reign to go sleep with people. And then they just like run away and they're like, I'm messaging everyone. I'm going to go sleep with, and then they like, don't talk to you. And like, it's like, I don't feel like we're on the same team. I feel like you're just like running off and sleeping with tons of people. So you need to figure out whatever makes you both feel like you are on the same team. So create agreements and then allow yourself to test out the agreements, like just test it out like one at a time, come back and communicate more and be like, how did that agreement feel with you? Do you want to keep going? Do you want to change it in any way or amend it in any way? So you guys are like creating your own beautiful structure of what kind of relationship you would like to have. I love this way more than just signing up for like, yep, the whole society is monogamous. So let's just be like, why do we believe that that one size fits all? It's not like everyone decided that we're going to eat a certain way. And so everyone eats a certain way. It's like we all have different preferences, different flavors, different things that we like at different times. It's the same with our our relationships and our desires that we have inside and outside the relationship. So the main thing I think is really important is that, yes, you make sure that you both feel like you're on the same team. You're doing this as a team because otherwise you might as well be friends with benefits. Because if you don't, I have been in a relationship with someone in an open relationship where, you know, we made an agreement that... We could play with other people, but we had to let each other know ahead of time that we wanted to do it and like get confirmation. And we couldn't play with people like we lived in Chiang Mai, but we so we and we traveled a lot, both of us. And so our agreement was that we only could play with people outside of our community, like outside of our uh, the town that we lived in. 
but I didn't feel like I was on the same team with him. It was like he would come back from trips and be like, oh, yeah, and I slept with this extra person or, you know, this thing happened and that thing happened. And I was just like thinking, I feel like like we live together. We have a house together. We have dogs together. We have a life together. But in all like intents and purposes, I felt like we were just friends who just happened to let each other know when we were sleeping with other people and we slept with each other. Like I didn't feel like he was protecting my heart. I felt like he just wanted to have his own freedom and he wanted to have someone to come home to and have dinner with, but he didn't really want to be in a relationship with me. I didn't feel like we were on the same team. So this is another point that's very important is you need to keep protecting each other's hearts. Like with Faraday and I, the thing that I always say is I'm committed to our connection first. I'm committed to protecting his heart. And I will act accordingly. So this is more principles than it is rules. Rules are super easily broken. And principles are like, I actually care about how you're doing emotionally. And I'm going to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm checking in to see if it like it checks back in and aligns with this principle. So a principle that I have is I want to make sure that him and I are on the same team. And so, of course, I would always tell him how I feel about other people or, you know, if I'm attracted to someone else, even if I don't necessarily want to act on it. It's like I would want him to know like how, like what my reality is like because I'm committed to protecting his heart first. And if I check in with him and I say, Hey, like th- this happened recently where I was like connected with someone at the last play party and he also connected to someone really well. And that person asked him, like can, they wanted to hang out outside. She wanted to hang out with him outside the play party. He said, you know, I don't feel called to do this, but I feel called to play with her at the next play party. Like I just feel like pretty fulfilled by our relationship, like my and his relationship dynamic. And I had said to him, okay, I fully support you. If you want to play with her outside the play party, just let me know. I'd rather just like know what's going on or know what your desires are. And he was like, no, no, I really like I, this is where I'm at. And I said, well, I connected with someone at the play party and this person invited me out to lunch and I would like to, you know, have a friend. I don't feel called to, you know, have a sexual partnership with him like right now in this moment. Uh, I'm happy to play with him at the next play party. But like right now I'm really calling in like a lot more friendships and a lot more like sensual connections that where I can play, but I don't necessarily need to make love because for me where I'm at right now in my relationship is I'm feeling very fulfilled by Faraday. And also if I'm going to sleep with someone that's not Faraday, like they have to be on a very certain vibration, like alignment with my life and you know, someone who could actually be friends with Faraday. Like, I feel like I wanted to be someone who's like on the same page of me and my life and where I'm at in this moment and everyone else I'm happy to play with. But this thing that like what I was talking about, like going out to lunch with this person, I checked in with Faraday because he doesn't get to decide if I go out to lunch with this person or not, but I'm committed to protecting his heart. So if he said to me, that makes me uncomfortable, like right now where we are, like, I just don't really like it just doesn't feel good in my body to have you like have extra relationships wherever like whatever whatever like if, or if a specific person he didn't feel comfortable if he had said those things then I would need to take it in and be like okay I would like to go out with this person but I choose to protect his heart like I am so committed to my relationship with Faraday first that that trumps everything else and there's going to be times in your relationship where There's not necessarily a logical reason why it doesn't feel good for the other, your partner to connect to someone else or for them to like, they might come to you and be like, it just doesn't feel good in my body for you to connect with this person. And I know it's not logical and da da da, but like, this is where I'm at in my heart right now. And this is where I say about principles over rules. Cause if you have this principle of like, I just really want us to feel like we're on the same team then that will guide you a lot better than, okay, we said we could sleep with other people because at the end of the day, yeah, you can go sleep with them. Like no one's going to stop you, but like, do you want to come home and like it, it really have hurt your partner? You know, even especially after they communicated with you that it would hurt them. Like, do you really want to do that? Cause I wouldn't want to do that to Faraday. And these are some things that I think are really important because I think people are like, okay, 
you know, monogamy is safe and like non-monogamy is not safe because there's no boundaries and you can do everything. And what I'm trying to tell you is that you can create these really safe parameters where everyone feels really good in their bodies, their hearts are protected, and also their inner kids are allowed to come out and play because that's what we all are. And this is why people are more and more opening up to the idea of ethical non-monogamy because we're realizing that a lot of the monogamy is just programming that we have. And so many of us are realizing like, wow, I want to have these bigger experiences in my life besides, you know, being with the, like, I love Faraday so much. I cannot speak to what's going to happen in the future, but as I am right now, I would love to have him be my life partner for the rest of my life. That doesn't mean that there's going to be other people flowing in and out of my life that I fall in love with or that I have some sort of connection to emotionally, romantically, or sexually. And to me, that is just being realistic. Like, I feel like a lot of people just try, try and like mentally lock themselves into this one person and then block out all other connections that they have or make themselves feel guilty when they have other connections, even if it's just like an attraction to someone else. And I'm thinking, but this is just all us all being human. And as humans, we are here to explore and to connect with more than one person in our lifetime in order to grow our consciousness and in order to play and have fun and enjoy and have pleasure in our lives. And that's not to say that our partner is not someone that we, you know, like we can still enjoy lots of pleasure and feel very fulfilled by our partner. And it's still okay to choose and desire to have more pleasure outside of your one partnership that you have. And I feel like I just want to like say this, that like it's so normal for people to worry that it will hurt the relationship or worry that, you know, that they'll feel all this guilt or somehow it will cause disconnection. And what I want to say is that if you do it in a way where you're like really committed to protecting each other's hearts, even if at the end of the day you try it out and it like doesn't like you're just like, well, okay, we tried it. This is not a thing for us. Or like I, one of you just does not feel comfortable and the other one just chooses to stay in monogamy with you because they love you so much. You will always feel more connected to each other because you went through this together. And you, tro- if you show up authentic, authentic blah, words, if you show up authentic, authentically, <laughs> having a hard time using words today. If you show up authentic, authentically to the situation, it can only bear good things because if you're super real, your partner's super real, you're, protected, you're committed to protecting each other's hearts and you go in it as a team and you, if you choose to keep exploring, choose to close the relation back to monogamy, but you keep going through it as a team, you will only become stronger. And I, I'm saying that from experience because... I've had many of these different types of relationships and what I have found is that it wasn't about if I was attracted to someone else or if my partner was attracted to someone else or if someone slept with someone. It was about me looking my partner in the eye and feeling like, do we have a real soul connection? Are we really committed to each other? Are we actually in deep partnership? And when you can look at each other and be real with each other and also be real about your desires about other people, to each other that is super sexy that is the new sexy I always say in my play parties and in workshops that communication is very sexy and like for me this is something that super turns me on when someone like especially a man is like willing to be vulnerable willing to share his heart and willing to speak up for his desires and boundaries and I know it's the same for women as well but I'm just saying especially for men because I think in today's world like men have really only been given the space for like anger and not necessarily giving a lot of space in our society for vulnerability and you know fear of losing the love that they have with their partner which is so normal I have so many men come to me that are in coupleship that want to come to the play parties and they're like I just love my partner so much and I also want to protect her like physically emotionally sexually Like, how do I do this? How do I show up as a man in this relationship? And also I have my own desires, but like I love my my woman so much. And I think that that's really beautiful. I think this is like the beginning of all of us coming together in tribe, you know, going through this, I call it one big experiment because at the end of the day, 
you choose whatever feels best in your body. And that is the one thing. It's like, do not listen to me. Do not listen to anyone else. Take in all of this information and then you listen to yourself. I mean, like, don't, don't choose to take on what my beliefs as your own unless they actually feel good in your body. So take in all the information around you. But like at the end of the day, you get to decide how you choose to live your life. Like your life is your own living art piece. Like you get to actively create whatever beautiful epic timeline you want. And this can be something that's part of it or not part of it or something that you explore and then choose whether you want it to be part of it, of, of your timeline or not. So the reason why I love the play party so much is that, you know, like I, I was a virgin when I got married and then I was in a very monogamous religious marriage for six years And then when I got out of it, I explored, you know, playing around with other people. But because of my monogamy programming, I would eventually just drop into a partnership with someone that was a monogamous relationship. And I think the reason why this happened was because when you're married for six years, like I wasn't in love with my ex-husband, but I loved him as a person. Like we were like best friends. And when you share your life with someone for six years you really see the depth of connection that you can have with another person and for me I could never really get on board with one night stands or like casual sex because my heart is so sensitive and I value myself and my body so much and I also value whoever I'm sleeping with so much that like if I'm choosing to open up my body in that way and make love with someone, it's going to, going to be because I want that person to be like in my tribe. You know, like even if we, I know that we're not going to date or like be each other's partners, I still love them, and respect them and honor them enough that I want them to be in my community. So I would choose men, like after I got divorced, that were like beautiful men, you know, but I didn't know how to speak up for me wanting to be non-monogamous. Like this is something that I think has always been part of me, but because of my programming and a lot of suppression around women's rights that I had as, as a kid, I didn't know how to speak up and say, I love you and I would like to play with other people. So what do I do when I don't know how to figure this out is I create events so that I can explore myself and create a safe space for myself and also for my friends. And this is how the play party started was um, we were is locked down. I was on Koh Phangan, which is a small island in Thailand with like my really good dropped in community that I had. I had a community space called Remote Collective and we did so many events for the community, like connection events, like kids events, teenager clubhouse. Like we were we were doing like three events a day sometimes during lockdown because a lot of the yoga shalas were closed, but we were allowed to do events in our space. And some of my friends, they were like, I want to make like a fun, sexy party together. And it wasn't necessarily like I want to be sexual with other people. It was more just like we wanted to feel sexual and like be in our sexual empowerment. So me and my friend Daisy were like, okay, let's do this. And then my friend Lucien said, well, I want to serve tea and like have like tea ceremony meditation in it. Can we combine it all? And so we called it Sexy Zen where it was like everyone wore sexy lingerie and kimonos and our friend Lucian like did tea ceremonies and we daisy baked a bunch of cakes and like we just had so much fun together and so many people heard about it and so because people had such a good time at the party that it spread through our community and people were like Brittany when are you gonna do the next one and I was like oh okay so I did the next one and I did the next one and then it evolved into what are now called the vanilla vanilla play parties but for me I always wanted it to be no penetration because I was like there is so much to explore sensually emotionally and even sexually before you get to penile penetration which means like penis and vagina or anal so like oral sex was okay fingering sex toys everything but I just felt like there was some different level of it's just things that happen when there's like penile penetration and I was in a relationship I was in a monogamous relationship when I started these parties uh, with someone named Andy 
and Andy and I had a conversation about it and we made an agreement that at the party we could play with other people. So I was super excited because I was like, wow, this is my person. And also I'm in a safe space that like I'm creating, I'm inviting all these amazing people and I get to play with other people. Wow, this is so amazing. And then at the party, like literally after I did all of the introduction and the workshop and then it went into like the actual party, they call it open play. Andy pulls me into the front yard, uh, like away from everyone and is like, actually, I don't want us to play with other people. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and because I was committed to honoring his heart, I was like, this is something, and I, I honored it. So I didn't play with anyone else. And it was really hard for me because I was like, this is something that, you know, I really wanted to do, but it, like, I wasn't gonna, like to me, it would be the end of our relationship if I were to play with other people at the, in that moment. And so I honored him. But I also was like, I really had to check in with myself because I was like, this is who I am. And this is something I really want to explore. And I have spent so much of my life closing myself off because my partner didn't want to explore this and didn't feel comfortable with me exploring this. And so I did another play party and it happened again. And I just told him, I was like, I don't want to ever do another play party while we are still dating. And we ended up breaking up pretty soon after that. And it was for many reasons, but one of the main ones was because for me on who I am, I just know that like by nature, I am non monogamous And this is something that in order for me to come into my full power, I, this is how I choose to live my life, you know? And then... I went through a phase where I was hosting the play parties for like many months and I was single and then I started dating someone and um, after about four months of us being connected to each other, we started dating like more seriously. Like we were just kind of casual, but you know, still like in each other's lives, but you know, not wanting to be like boyfriend, girlfriend. And then he was like, I would love to meet your community. I like, let me know like how I can do that. And I was like, I on purpose hadn't had to meet any of my friends because I was still feeling so hurt by my last relationship. And so I thought, okay, if he really wants to see who I am and my friends, I'm going to invite him to a play party. So I invited him to the next play party and he came and he played. It was, it seemed to be, cause he said, oh yeah, I'm open to non-monogamy. He ended up coming to two play parties. And after the second one, he was like, actually, no, I want to be monogamous with you. And I remember thinking, why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> because I love these men. I also do not want to be monogamous. And I remember talking to my godparents about it. And they were like, Brittany, at the beginning of a relationship, at the beginning of any connection that you have with anyone who you think could be, you know, any sort of connection to you, that you need to really check in with them and ask them, what are your views on sexuality? Like, do you, or do you want monogamy? And if they want monogamy, you need to say, thank you, but no, I do not want to have a sexual relationship with you. Because at the end of the day, if you do, if you don't check in, or if they do tell you very clearly that they want monogamy, and you, you still go further in the relationship, you're going to keep hitting this point where they're asking you for monogamy, and this is not something that you want to do right now. So that person and I ended up breaking up. And around the same time, Faraday came into my life and he came because I met him because he came to my play party and at the time he was dating someone else so I didn't really pay him that much attention because you know I wasn't going like I like I always honor other people's coupleship and partnerships um, and then like six months later he invited me out to Europe to come up to his retreats we ended up hosting a play party together here in Berlin and it was like very established in our relationship that we we were non-monogamous I mean, like that we both wanted non-monogamy. So again, we weren't, even when we hosted the play party in Berlin last September, we were not dating each other. At the play party is when we kissed for the first time, which I just find really funny because like all of our friends think that thought we were together. Um, and then we were still connecting. We were both connecting to other people. And then he came to Thailand that October or November. I can't remember which. No, I think it was beginning of November, last of November. And then we started dating. He came to one play party and then he asked me out. We started dating and then we, 
I hosted one more play party while we were dating in Copenhagen. And at that play party, I a couple things happened. One, um, I was in such a love bomb relationship. Like, you know, I was just like so in love, love bubble, not love bomb, love bubble with him that I wasn't really like paying attention to, you know, who was coming to the play party. And what I didn't realize was that many of his followers came to the play parties, which was great. Like I love vegan savages. They're amazing. Um, but there wasn't anyone that I particularly wanted to connect with that night. And there was many women who wanted to connect with him, like 10 women. And they were literally lining up to like suck his dick or have a connection with him. And I'm not saying anything negative about this. I think it's amazing. Like Faraday and I both have many connections with other people in our lifetimes. And, you know, we're both like very embodied and very happy with ourselves. And we love to connect with other people. But for me, it felt like, and another thing that happened at play party was we had decided at the beginning to only play, like before the play party happened, we had decided to only play with each other. And in, in my heart, that's actually what I needed at the time. But this is what I want to say again about agreements. So we made an agreement before the play party, like days before the play party happened, that we were only going to flow with each other. In the play party, like right after the open play, Faraday comes to me and says, actually, I want to flow with other people. Is that okay? I didn't know what to do in that moment because I had been literally in the same house, like the same, like my community space with a different partner where they were trying to, you know, we had said we were going to flow with other people. Like felt like the opposite situation. Like I was like in like the reverse situation what had happened with Andy where he was like, we had agreed to play with other people. And then he said, no, I don't actually want you to. And I didn't want to hold him back. I wanted Faraday to have this experience with other people if this is what he really wanted. Like I was like, yes, we are chosen and free. We choose each other, but we're also free to play with other people. And so I said, okay, if that's what you really want to do, then yeah, let's do that. What I didn't realize is this really made me lose a lot of trust with him. And so this is something that I think is very important to remember is that if you make an agreement and then you go into a sexy, like a sexually charged space, like say you're going to a sex club or a party or a play party or anywhere where there's like sexual, sexual energy happening, you have to stick to your agreements because there's that's the only thing you have that builds your trust and there's going to be like if you're in the energy of sexuality it's very easy to be like it's kind of like a drug it's very easy to like get caught up in it and be like oh let's play with other people because we're here and like that person's really sexy i want to flow with them but your commitment to your partner is what comes first and that's the thing that's most important is protecting their heart so it was my self-responsibility to speak up to Faraday, but I also was very upset at him that he put me on the spot. Like we literally were in the front room where everyone could see us and like I had just hosted everything. I was in the middle of still like facilitating the party and running the party and he was like, I want to fly with other people. And I was like, okay, if that's what you want to do. And then he just like flowed with many many women that night and it really hurt me and to the point where like I didn't want to host any more play parties like I felt like traumatized from it like I was like but it was what I I, it took me many months also to unpack this because you know a lot of people look at me as like this person knows what she's doing like she's fully empowered she's always speaking her truth when you're in love with someone it's so easy to get caught up in the love and to also like I was saying, get lost in the partnership with the person and not remember what is good for you as an individual. And what was good for me in that moment with Faraday where he's asking me to fill with other people is to say, no, I actually, it doesn't feel good in my body right now. Like I would love to say yes to you, but like I need to honor what feels good for me and protect my heart right now. And my heart doesn't feel good. Like I don't, I don't want either of us to flow with other people. I want us just to be in our love bubble. We just started dating a month ago. And then what ended up happening was he flowed with many, many women and then came home to me that night and was like, all of these women, I love them. It was really nice and I honor like flowing with him, but it all just made me realize how much I love you. And I was like, I don't want you to touch me. But it wasn't because he flowed with other women. It was because I felt my trust was broken because we broke our agreement. And also I felt like I lost trust with myself because I said yes when I needed to say, like they say, there's this term that's like saying no to other people is saying yes to yourself sometimes. 
And in that moment, I needed to say no to Faraday because I needed to say yes to me what was protecting my heart. And I didn't do that. So I lost trust with myself. I lost trust with him. And I, what, there wasn't clear communication. And so this, this went on for a while. Like it took us a while to unpack this in our relationship. And it also took me a while to like build trust with him. But I also knew in that moment that I owned the responsibility that I had, that I said yes when I should have said no. And so even though that night I wanted to make drama with him and like make all these reasons why I was upset at him, I owned that I was upset because this happened, like because he fought with other people and he was like, well, why didn't you say no? Like, why didn't you just tell me? And I was like, I don't know because I wanted you to be free, you know? And so it's like, this is, and then I went and talked to some friends who are very good at ethical non-monogamy and they were like, oh, Brittany, it's because of the agreement. This is why this hurts so much is because you lost trust in him. You lost trust in yourself. And I was like, oh my God, I'm also just so happy. I'm in community of people who are also practicing ethical non-monogamy that I can have these reflections, you know, because I was being really hard on myself. I was like, why haven't I figured this out? Because I also want to flow with other people. I just didn't want to do it at that play party. So we figured it out. <laughs> you know, we talked about it. We, we communicated. There was many, many different conversations that were had and heart to heart connections that Faraday and I had. And then this last play party in Berlin, like two weeks ago, it was so amazing. Like we communicated to everyone in the beginning, like when it, in the play parties, if someone's in partnership, we always say, if you're in a coupleship and you want to speak to the group, like any boundaries or like how you guys want to flow in the party, please do so we can honor that. And Faraday and I shared with everyone, we want to flow with each other first and then we want to flow with each other, other people individually. And so in the beginning of the party, we flowed with each other. We had a really nice connection. He gave me like a really nice massage and like other yummy things happened. And then, you know, we, other people were starting to flow around us. Things were getting juicy. And then we were just full like, I was like, I said, I want to go play with other people. Are you okay with that? And he was like, yeah, go for it. And then we both had an amazing night, you know, but it was the first time that he saw me flow with other, like have sexual connections with other men. And he told me afterwards it was really hard for him, you know, like it wasn't like he was just like there was like this 15 seconds of me checking with my body. I'm like, am I okay with this? Because like there's so much doesn't matter how much we say we're open to being open. There's so much programming that we innately have around monogamy. And like, what does it mean if we see our partner flowing with other people? And also just this feeling of like, I want to protect my heart, you know, so this like very normal vulnerability comes out. And so the next day we talked about it a lot. We cuddled, you know, we kept saying like basically re choosing each other and recommitting to each other's hearts. And also we made love, like making love. We made, we decided that after the play parties now, from now on, doesn't matter how tired we are. And if we want to talk about everything the next day and process everything like communication wise, it's super important that we come together physically and make love at the end of the night. And I really love this because I feel like there's something that happens on a somatic level, like a body experiencing level, like when you flow with other people and have like sexual connections with other people, that when you come back to your partner, you just want to make sure you're both are good and you want to like reconnect and like in the spirit world, in the physical world, and also like on a soul level together. And that's what making love is with each other. And it's really beautiful. So, well, it was a lot. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of things to say. I have even more things to say about this. Um, but I think th the thing I will leave you with is at every single moment, like I have friends who are like, yeah, Brittany, I would love to explore non-monogamy with my partner, but I'm so afraid of losing them. And what I want to say to you, is if you're in this situation, is that every given moment you get to choose love or fear. So whether you actually act on it and like go play with other people sexually or emotionally or sensually, you still like, you have to ask yourself, like, am I staying closed in my relationship out of fear or out of like abundance? Like if you're like, I'm good, my partner is good, we just love each other. And I'm like, go have fun, like be with yourselves. Like, I'm so happy for you. But if you are in abundance with each other and you're just choosing to not act with other people just because you're worried that it might hurt the situation, then what I say to you is like, what is the point of living? 
<laughs> like we go and make a lot of risk, like quote unquote risk, because you don't know how it's going to turn out in many different areas of our lives. But it just happens to be not socially acceptable right now to make some of these risks in non-monogamy. It's like, you know, you move to a new country for a job or you try this thing or you try that thing and you're supported in your community. But we don't have that much support right now as a community, as a society for us to explore ethical non-monogamy. And this is why it's even more scary, because if you go through it, it's like, who do you talk to? Do you have friends? This is, I think it's really important to build a community if you are if you if it's something that you want to pursue to build a community of people who are also going through this together. And this is what the play parties are. It's like so many amazing people I have met and friends with to this day because they chose to go through this journey of the play party with us. And they met other people who are going through similar journeys of trying out ethical non-monogamy. And it's really beautiful. And there's so much more to connect with than just sexually. Like the reason why I am excited to go out to dinner or go out to lunch with this person I connected with at the last play party is because he's married with two kids and they were choosing ethical non-monogamy at the beginning of their relationship they closed their relationship to have kids and now they're opening it again and he had a lot of really interesting things to say and I was like wow I really want to connect with you and learn from each other and like build my community of people who are exploring ethical non-monogamy and I think it's really fun so the last things I'll leave you with is always remember to be committed to protecting each other's hearts and you can do what Faraday and I do, which is choose to be chosen and free with each other. So we choose each other every single day, but we're also free to go out and explore other things and other people and connections that are calling to us and be in that flow of synchronicity. And um, yeah, I just <laughs> message me on Instagram. Let me know how it's going. Like I'm, I love hearing from you guys and I love like, yeah, just knowing your journey and knowing how th these podcasts are affecting you. And I'm always here rooting you on. You're doing amazing. And also, I host the Vanilla Vanilla Play Parties every single month. I'll be doing them here in Berlin th all throughout the summer and in Copenhagen in the winter. The next one is June 17th. And I'm not fully committed to the one after that, but I think right now it's going to be July 8th is the next one after that. So just message me on Instagram and I will give you all the details. Okay, I hope you have an amazing day and that this was super enlightening for you. <laughs> okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, so I want to add a little bit something onto this. What people don't realize is that Faraday and I are so open about what's happening in our lives and also what's happening in our lives is still ever evolving, right? Like Faraday listened to this um, podcast and then was like, we, and then he was like, can we talk about some of these things? Uh, and we had a discussion. And what I'm realizing even more so is you have your own internal reality and your partner, um, if you're with someone, has their own, they're also their own internal reality. And what that means is that your stories are a lot of times very different of how you experience things or even how you think your partner experienced something. Um, and so it's communication is so important and also being open to communication. Cause even when Faraday brought this up yesterday about like reviewing the podcast and just wanting to talk to me about the things, my immediate reaction was to be defensive. Like I was like, Ooh, because for me, this was my truth. Like I was really sharing so openly in this podcast about how the reality was as I saw it. Um, and then us talking about it more, he understood my side and then he was like, I want to just share from my perspective. So something that he spoke about was when I said like his reaction after this last play party, it was really hard for him because he was like in Germany, you know, like for us Germans, something that's really hard is like World War II, you know, like that's like our level of this is really hard or something that's like very deep emotion, you know, like, so this is an example of World War II is of something very deep emotionally that's like <clears throat> rough to go through. And he was like, at the play party, I, I, it wasn't necessarily hard for me. I w he went more into like neutral energy of like observing how he could react uh, in a negative way, but he kind of just like kept it neutral until we spoke the next day. And I would say that that's, that's accurate. Like when I, when we compare our stories together, because 
the night of the play party, I wanted to reconnect with him. And so I was like putting my arms around him after people left when he was washing the dishes and like wanting to connect. And he didn't want to connect with me, but he wasn't being mean or, you know, like he wasn't having negative energy. It was just kind of like this, like, but it felt disconnected. And so I interpreted that as he's going through a rough time. This is hard for him, but I was kind of like, this is his experience. He needs to go through this. And, you know, within 24 hours, we talked about it. We made love. Everything was perfect again. So in his opinion, it wasn't super hard, but it was something that we went through together. And I am proud of how we were able to navigate it because most couples wouldn't even wouldn't even go down this path to open themselves up to this, let alone be able to handle it so well. Like we really had a, a good heart to heart uh, the day after the play party. And I, I was even crying at some point because I was like, just so emotional about how much I loved him and like how much I love our connection and us. It it gave us an opportunity to go even deeper with each other because it was kind of this, you're putting your relationship under potential stress or, you know, like it could, it could go negatively, but when you go through it and you stay a team, it's like so nice on the outs when you come out the other side, because you're like, we went through this, we learned a lot, we grew together and we allowed ourselves to have pleasure. And like, that's amazing, you know, like I do feel stronger in the relationship from this experience. And we're going to record a podcast soon of us together talking about this and talking about being open as a couple, because I think this is something where it's important to have both people there discussing it so that you can check each other's stories and compare stories and find a shared reality, because it doesn't matter how much I believe my version of of what happened is true I'm choosing to be in a relationship with someone and so I have to create this shared reality and it doesn't mean I accept completely what he says it means we both stand side by side put everything in the middle and we figure it out as a team like what do we choose to believe and stories of what happens in your relationship dynamic is really important so it's like very important to get these stories in a straight in a way of like what is your shared reality? Because if you don't, and one of you feels very negatively about a situation and the other one is like, it was fine. Then it's like, there's something that can be uncovered here. There's something that can be worked out. Um, and the other thing he brought up was, he's like, did you really lose like so much trust in me after the first play party that we did as a couple? And I was like, yeah, that is my truth. I did lose a lot of trust in him, but I also own the, that a lot of I think he didn't realize this because I really immediately took a lot of responsibility of like not speaking up for what my needs were in the moment of I could have just said to him hey I don't want you to play with anyone tonight like we made this agreement let's stick to the agreement um and I didn't honor that I didn't honor what my inner child needed at that time which was like safety and trust and like you know connection as a team of what we had stuck to or what we had agreed to and to stick to that so I I didn't like project a lot of this onto him. I knew it was my my own my own stories that I needed to work through, my own belief system of like feeling comfortable to speak up for what my needs are even if I feel like he might not like my reaction. Like for instance, if I had said you know, we had agreed to only play together at the first play party that we were a couple and if he had come to me and said hey, I want to play with other people. I was worried that if I said, no, I don't want you to play with other people, that he would build resentment in me and maybe lose some love in me. And that was my inner child, like feeling like maybe people pleasing and also not feeling safe within myself and trusting him enough to, to test out that love and just be like, no, these are my needs. Like, are you willing to speak up for what my needs are right now? Um, And this is one thing I think is really important to say in the relationship is when you are committed to protecting each other's hearts, it doesn't matter if someone wants to go play and enjoy pleasure. Safety in the relationship is what comes first because me saying yes to him going and enjoying pleasure at that play party and that moment equaled me feeling really unsafe because my needs for safety were and like needs of like being able to trust the agreements that we had made with each other was being like violated feels like too strong of a word but like 
Like it wasn't there, you know, and I didn't understand what was happening. And so, and also I I had been in almost the exact same situation where I was on the flip side with a past partner in the same house, in the same play party situation. And I wanted to go play with someone else, you know? So I was like, well, I don't want to do what my ex-boyfriend did to me where I was like locked, I felt felt like I was locked down. And so I didn't want to lock Faraday down. But I understand now that those are both really big extremes in the situation. And when you're working with matters of the heart, they're very sensitive and very vulnerable. And it's really important to be very delicate with it because there's so many times in the future where, you know, we both are going to have the opportunity to enjoy pleasure with other people. Um, But at any given moment, it's like really important to be gentle along the way in that process. It's like, why rush to, okay, now we're going to be with 10 people tonight playing at this play party when like we just got together like a couple weeks before, like we could have just like gradually went into the process, but I didn't know how to do that. So this is why I'm sharing this with all of you, because I hope that by sharing this stuff, you can also be more gentle with each other. Because what I find is that there's normally one person in the relationship whose need for freedom is really strong. And there's one person in the relationship whose need for connection and safety is really strong. And you you can sense this like push pull of like one who's like, I want to go explore with other people. And one who's like, I'm scared that this is going to hurt our connection and our dynamic and I want safety. And maybe even that person who is worried about hurting, like the one whose need for safety is really high, that person may still want to play with other people, but their need for safety trumps their desires to play with other people in that moment. So it's all about working with each other and guiding each other in a way where we feel safe and then we can go play and like there's no rush, you know, we have our whole lives. I think the thing that is important to say is that it's a beautiful journey to go on when you open your relationship and it makes me sad to know that I spent six years in my first marriage, my first marriage, first marriage. I'm not married right now, but like the first time I was married, um, not even allowing myself to, because of programming, like explore that or think that that was okay. And then being in so many monogamous relationships where I was trying to attempting to explore this and, my partner was just fully not on board and I'm like, I think that's why even in the relationship with Faraday, I was kind of rushing to get to the point where we were open because this is who I am and I know this is what I am by nature, which is, which is just a play, a playful, a playful sexual creature, uh, who also is very heart open and, and chooses to be connected to my partner. So this is why we always say chosen and free. Um, but there's no rush. Um, but also there is something really important about if you do, if this is something that you feel called to explore, to allow yourself to actually get started on the exploration. Because the boyfriend that I was talking, the ex-boyfriend I had, Andy, that was, I was dating when I first started doing the play parties, he kept saying, yes, let's open our relationship. Yes, we can open our relationship, but I don't feel like we're ready yet. And when I would ask like, well, what do you want to work on or to be ready? He didn't have a clear answer. And so it just felt like this, like, I felt like another man who was in charge of me and my sexual exploration and enjoyment of pleasure. And I was just like, I have done this for far too long in my life. I can no longer put my pleasure in the hands of a man in the sense of like allowing him to control and decide what happens to me in my body. So this is a little shout out to all the women out there. Like don't let the man in your life lead on your sexual exploration. You get to decide what happens to your body. And of course, be gentle with yourself and with your partner. But if you're feeling like you want to explore this, that's amazing. Like go for it. Like don't wait until the man in your life is like, yes, this is okay. Because there's so much program we have around women enjoying sexuality equals what we are a whore or something dirty. And that is such bullshit. That is programming made by men to try and suppress us because they're worried. I'm not saying this is your partner. I'm saying this is a societal program that has been started by men and has been infused in religion and cultures throughout the centuries. Because if men 
know that a woman has been with many partners or explored a lot sexually, their insecurity comes out of, of whether they are able to perform in bed with that woman. And so the way that they have flipped it and changed the programming is to say that a woman who has a lot of sexual experiences is a whore or something dirty or something that's like damaged which is not true because if you look at it I always know when something is bullshit is if you try and flip it the other way it's like if you look at the culture around men exploring sexually throughout the last couple thousand centuries this is very normal you know men going and having many women to explore with sexually before they get married to a virgin woman you know, it's like they can go play with everyone, but the woman must be a virgin and, you know, must stay a virgin until they, you know, de-virginize them. And I'm like, that is, that is a double standard. And I do not agree with that. And I choose to live in a reality where every single person gets to decide what happens to their body. Okay. This podcast is getting really long. Uh, we're going to do a lot more about these because it's something I feel very fired up about. Um, so if you have any more questions like that are spurred from this podcast, let me know. Send me a message on Instagram and I will probably make a podcast about it. Okay. Have a beautiful day. Bye. And I wanted to add a couple books that I recommend everyone to read if you're going to go down this journey of openness or even just exploring openness. And two, there's two really good books that I've read that have helped me just to have some context, see what other people are doing. The first one is called Polysecure. And it kind of just lays, it's written by a therapist woman who um, she wasn't, she wasn't in an open relationship, but she started getting a ton of couples who were exploring openness. So she started specializing it. And then she went on her own journey of openness. And she talks about this throughout the book. But this has been like one that really helped me. I didn't necessarily agree with everything everyone was doing. Like she shares a lot of stories from her clients, but I loved that I was learning about like just what was working and not working for other people. Cause like I was saying earlier, it's really important to be in a community of people where if you want to explore this, it's like an okay and accepted thing. And there's other stories and touch points of what's helped and worked in other people's lives to relate to. So that one is called Polysecure. And then what a lot of people consider the quote unquote Bible uh, for polyamory is called Ethical Slut, which is a funny name. But this is like um, a lot of people in the polyamory community have gotten together and made this book and they do lots of updates to it over the years it's been out for a long time and this is going into kind of a lot of the different touch points that I've talked about in this talk and if you want to read this book I, I recommend making sure you get the most updated copy you can get on Amazon um, I'll put some links to these in my in my podcast here and yeah I just recommend like if this is something that you're really interested in diving into to educate yourself education is power and the more you read about these things and see what other people are doing the more you're empowering yourself to see that it's not crazy you know to explore openness and it can be something really fun if you do it in a safe and embodied way and the next podcast that uh faraday and i are going to make actually right now um is uh, and we'll release it soon, is about our dynamic together. So we're going to do a podcast together talking about how we have flowed through this. And you can hear it from Faraday's perspective. Um, so that one will be on his podcast, which is V-Gains, V-E-G-A-I-N-S. And I recommend to listen to that as it comes out in the f- near future. And yeah, just enjoy the journey of whatever you are experiencing right now and whatever you choose to explore in the future. And just know that you are, everything is perfect as long as it feels good in your body. Okay, this is Brittany Bond signing off.